Welcome into Extra Time. So good to have Ale Moreno hey. back. I've been so tired of Shaka Hislop and his antics. Wow. I'm just kidding. What, what did you do, Shaka? I don't know. <laughs> this is covered news to me. I'm just kidding. We've also got I Gavin thought we had such a there. good working relationship, because Alexis. In case Apparently you don't not. trust what these two say, that's why we've got Gab Marcotti. Ah. Guys, okay. ready for questions? Yeah, all right. We've not, got, we've not gotten off to a good start here, by the yeah. way. Let me just say that. <laughs> Shaka, you know you're my day one. You're my fellow Western. Don't try to butter me up no, no. now. Nothing can get between Don't try to butter, butter, butter me up now. Apparently now. <laughs> Whoa. Too late. What Too did late. I walk into? Shaka Sawa. Carry right. on. Let's have this question. Very from long arms, Shaka. Viva Var. Is that what I think it is? Viva Var? Like, long live video sister referee? Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. All right, After good. After seeing that potato landmine looking pitch Valladolid had, Versus Barcelona, what's the worst pitch you can remember playing on? Ooh. Shaka, we know in the Caribbean we've got some interesting pitches. Oh, no, I've played some bad pitches. A lot of them are sand. Back. That's probably oh. why. But. Well, I, I'm guessing. Professional. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to think that this is more on the professional level. Which still applies. <laughs> uh, I, you know, some of the toughest ones have been when we're doing. When, some of the teams from Europe come over to the U.S. and then we would be playing Major League Soccer and we would have to play either the game before or after the European teams. And usually those took place in stadiums where they have a turf and they would bring the natural grass in patches and then piece that together. So well, sometimes if they don't do a good job of the scenes of it, now you can see actually the division of the patches. It make, makes it impossible to play on at times and also the bounce of the ball is not what you expect it to be because you got turf underneath. And it, it was a hazard in terms of the health of the players. And I don't, I'm not sure how actually European teams allow that to happen to be the, the, the surfaces that they play in. And it, it did not give you a true bounce as a player. So it was quite frustrating. I, I played in a, a couple of bad ones and, and bad in, in different ways. I played Preston North End when they still had their Asher Turf pitch. And this is back in the 90s. So you know what the Asher Turf was like back then. Played in Bucharest in a Europa League game, but it poured. Mm. So you can't blame, you it can't like blame the club there. But you know what was bad? Played in Monaco. Monaco Stadium, the car park is under the stadium. So the pitch was off, but what? They painted it green. <laughs> Seriously, mm. they painted the pitch green. So on TV, again, this is in, in Europa League, or oh, maybe Champions League, I can't remember. It looks fantastic, but what? when you're standing on it, it is awful. I mean, it is patchy, nowhere near as bad as this, nothing coming up like this, I have to say. But as a pitch, that was probably as bad as I played on professionally. He, he's another one. There was a moment where, you'll be familiar with this stadium, uh, the cotton ball in Dallas was being remodeled. And so the games that FC Dallas was playing, we had to play at a high school stadium, Dragon Stadium, I remember, in South Keller, Ooh. just outside of Dallas. But here's the problem. It's turf, right? And it's black. And so back in the day, the ESPN Soccer Saturday game was at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central time. In the middle of summer, in Dallas. In Dallas. So hot as hot could be. So much so that we came, after the game, we came into the locker room, and the bottom of your shoes had melted yeah. onto oh, the field. Oh my goodness. It was ridiculous. So it's, no, let me guess, no slide tackles? No, I mean, well, you can if no you want to, but celebration. No, nobody was running to start with. Yeah. Everybody just walked yeah. around. Yeah. And, and your feet are melting. But other than that, it was great. <laughs> I see Gab chuckling over there. Gab, did you, have you seen any pitches that have been as bad as what we saw at Valladolid? Yeah, that one was uh, uh, pretty bad in uh, in 2018. Um, I remember that uh, there there was a team in. Um, I, I'm sure this is on YouTube. This is like 10, 15 years ago, in uh, in Romania. Uh, there was a team which had installed undersoil undersoil heating, so there were sort of pipes underneath the the, the pitch, but um, I don't know somehow it got waterlogged or or, or something like that. And you can actually, there's a YouTube video of this, I'll find it for you. There's actually bits of metal sticking out. I think oh. this is a Romanian second division or top division game. 
um, from the undersoil heating uh, apparatus. So yeah, <laughs> that, 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 I don't I don't know if that's quite as creepy as uh, as Ali's uh, shoes melting into the, the the turf though. You know, I think that one that one yeah that was that's fun. Like playing on lava. Dallas is a hot place. <laughs> yeah, Dallas is. is a hot place. Yes, it is indeed. All right, let's move on to our next question now. This one coming from Keston James, and he wants to know what kind of goal did Shaka Moore concede? Okay. <laughs> All kinds. The rooted to the spot ones or the courtesy dive oh, one? Courtesy dive. Oh, wow, he's very honest. Very courtesy honest. Dive. You know, I, had a, I had a goalkeeper coach at, at, at Newcastle, Terry Geno, and his phrase was always uh, be on the frame. Because if you're going to concede a goal, you want to be in the picture. So you've got to dive. They get in the photo. What? Wow, that's coaching right there. That, be in the that's, picture. What? That's be in the frame. Level. Be on the frame. It's so he wasn't, he wasn't hopeful that you. Oh, wait a minute. He wasn't hopeful that you were gonna stop it. So he said, I might as well Just be on the. Might as well be. Yeah, makes a good picture. Might as well be on the back page. At least get a picture. Of might as well be on the back page. But I know y'all wouldn't appreciate this. So all the young goalkeepers out there. Oh, here, here we go. There. Here we go. Shaka his left. I it. have made. A number of saves that I did not think I was going to just because I threw myself at the ball and got there. So there's something Aww. to it. Don't just stand up. I love these little nuggets of knowledge from Uncle Shaka. Ali won't appreciate that kind of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nuggets of knowledge? I, I tell you what, I appreciate the fact that your goalkeeping coach said, you know what, I know Dive. what I'm working with, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shaka, just make an effort to be in the picture. <laughs> he just did not trust Be on the frame. Be on the frame. Let's move on to our next question one. And I think that this is going to go to Gab oh. because Gab oh. is our resident conspiracy theorist. Uh -oh. So he might be able to is, answer is this Gab? one best. This one's from Ahmad. He wants to know, do you agree with Vidal that Bayern would have had two more Champions League titles and Real Madrid two less Champions League titles had VAR been implemented in the last two seasons in the Champions League? Ooh. Ooh. Um, he got excited for this one. Surely there were, there were a number of decisions that, that you'd want to see again. Um, including uh, a couple involving Vidal himself and, uh, uh, as I recall, Ronaldo being offside for one of the goals. But as I recall, I think in the first leg of if the semifinal that, that we're both talking about the same one, um, you know, a couple of breaks went Bayern's way as well. So, uh, no, I think Vidal, in, in typical Vidal fashion, is a bit over the top. And remember too, Arturo, just because you get past Real Madrid, there are other teams in the competition that you would have had to beat to be to become European champion. So I don't think it's quite that simple, but um, certainly with VAR, maybe we would have had a, a bit less of that sense of, of lingering injustice that they keep going on about in Bavaria. Well, now I just found out that Arturo Vidal is a fan of the show. Uh, there yeah, you go. Gab, Gab was just talking to him. <laughs> Arturo, come I here, know. buddy. I just found out that Gab is a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, My first well, name, it. too. You notice he said Arturo, yeah. so only Gab. Gab's just... Special. Gab's a superstar. He's a special one. Yeah. yeah All right. Is. Let's go to this question now from Nick. Oh, we're gonna get emotional again. Hold on. Let me get my tissues out. Uh -huh. And probably because I have to blow my nose soon, anyways. So Nick wants to know, Ale, how did it feel to witness Josef Martinez break the MLS scoring record? And my personal favorite, screaming, "Vamos Venezuela!" Which I'm banned from saying because I can't quite say it like Ale. But how did it feel, Ale? Tell us again because we can't get tired. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just a great sense of pride. It's, uh, so whenever, whenever, years from now, people look into the record books in MLS, the leading goal scorer for a single season, it's going to be Jose Martinez. And where is he from? Born in Valencia in Venezuela. And, 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 and so that carries a lot of value. And the, the fact that is a Venezuelan doing it. And, and, and a kid that has done it by scoring goal after goal after goal in the way that he has done it. And what, he, what it means to our country as well, to our people. It's a reason for hope. It's a reason to be proud of something. And, and right now, the situation in Venezuela, we hate to say it, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of reasons to be proud of anything uh, that is going on in our country. And to see this that Joseph is doing, I think the people in Venezuela rally around that. And, and it gives them a moment to celebrate. Then they can get back to the survival, and then they can get back to the frustrations of their everyday lives. But this gives them something to think that Venezuela are capable of, of producing people 
with talent and, and producing people that can and really put the name of Venezuela at the highest levels internationally, domestically, and wherever we go. Give me a moment. <laughs> Shaq and I just getting However, a moment here. I don't think Nick wrote this so that I give him a breakdown <laughs> of the situation in Venezuela. Just, I'm like Did welling you? up here. He wanted something else and he's gonna get it. Bumble Venezuela! <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. That was beautiful. Shaka's like all glistery eyed. Gab might shed a tear all the way in London. I don't, know if, I don't know if Gab is. I don't, I don't know if Gab, Gab is capable of tears. Gab is capable of tears. <laughs> Gab. Well, actually, Ali, I, I'll tell you what about Joseph Martinez. Uh, um, a guy I know, a good friend of mine, actually, uh, is an agent, and he had the mandate to uh, to try and find try and find him a, a, a club. When he was at Torino, they were gonna they wanted to send him on loan. Obviously. He ended up uh, in Atlanta, and the rest is, is history. Um, so he, he pitched them around to a bunch of clubs in England and in France, really right across Europe. And uh, and basically, he got a thank you email from from Joseph Martinez um, for just about every one. And throughout, the guy was totally courteous. He said, "I'll go anywhere." He never lost his faith. Uh, and then, obviously things worked out for him uh, in going to Atlanta. But he said it was, he said he was one of the, uh, one of the nicest, most respectful um, young men that, that, that he ever dealt with uh, as, as an intermediary, as an agent. Um, so I think you can only be happy for that he's enjoying success now. I mean, the warm, yes, fuzzy feelings in this studio right now are just me. too much. Like, I just, I don't know if I can anymore. Just, just battle Should we through. all hug it out? Let's just hug Ali. Oh, 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 look at that. I never now. get hugged from anybody. <laughs> We're going to call it. Shaka didn't want to hug you, clearly. Yeah, yeah you didn't want to come in. Nah, no, nah, all right. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> okay. Nah. We're, gonna, we're just sending a massive hug to Venezuela. I've been there. Love it there. Love the food. Love the people. And we hope that you guys love the show, ESPN FC. Remember, we are available daily if you want even more warm and fuzzy feelings. Just catch us on ESPN+. And watch Craig Burley. Oh, I <laughs> forgot about Craig. He's warm and fuzzy. I, I'm Craig. <laughs> <laughs>